Thanks to you joining the channel here over on Subscribestar, which probably will have a little bit more longevity to it. And then I think I'll probably move over to Give, Send, Go or something. Anyway, so Disney uh, CEO Chapek uh, reportedly had to uh, do some uh, funny business with the books and the red and the black ink, because otherwise be writing with a lot of red ink, to uh, cover the financial losses of such stellar hits uh, She-Hulk. Now, uh, you really got to kind of watch it to see to see it. Now, if you're not... If you're not really having those they live glasses on, you'll see it and it just won't feel like anything to you. It won't be out in your face. Well, some of the things will be out in your face offensive, like where she's given uh it but it like she's giving the guy a lecture on how easy his life is. And the thing is, it depends how familiar you are with the character of the whole character to the comic book and even the movies to know that like, oh wait a minute, this guy's uh life was kind of rough. It doesn't doesn't make sense. And like she's not when they wrote the show and she goes, Your life is so easy because you're a male. It's like she and you know, but she was referring to him, Bruce Banner specifically. But like the writers who wrote the show are not familiar with the comic book, so they're using him as a stand in for men in general. That was the point. It was a little bit of feminist nonsense. It's like, you know, men have harder lives than women, right? Like objectively, you I mean, there's a whole list of things you can com compare. It's like you have cat calls uh, alleged. That's your straw man. But men die earlier and lead much more miserable lives. Oh, well, that's not nearly the same as a cat call. That's the real. It's like you don't know what you're talking about. But like he was that was a straw man argument to, to just go after men in general, specifically, I think, men of the West. But it didn't make sense because you're using the character was a long history of comic book stuff behind him. You're like, oh, actually, yeah, this this Hulk guy had a really rough life. In fact, it's, it's such, such a rough life that he tried to um, remove himself from it. But you, you would have to have read the comic books to know that or even watch the movies because there's a scene in one of the movies where he references that, you know, putting a putting a, you know, 115 grain aspirin type of thing. And then uh, the other guy spits it out like that was a line in the movie. And it, it to, so so to do this She-Hulk line where she's talking about men and Bruce Banner, it's like. Did you even watch the movies? Oh, no, I didn't see those. OK, so you didn't read the comic books. You didn't watch the movies and you're right in the show. Yes, that's right. <laughs> So how well did the show do? Well, there's a missing step and then there's a the profit question mark. It's like, yeah, it's I don't is it gonna get a season two? Probably, because you know, every day in clown world it gets a little it gets a little more clowny outside. So did he did he cover the hide the financial stuff a little bit? Um uh, probably. Probably. I mean, I'm sure it wasn't too egregious, and it's probably also done with permission of everyone around him. But it feels like this whole thing feels like you got a red herring and a and somebody who's just a distraction and ha who had to be a sacrificial pawn to to buy you a couple more quarters of 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 uh, underperforming Disney and uh, like oh we got Iger back and things are going to turn around it's like but you stop stop right there and think like okay so so but uh, I don't know their philosophies are not any different right they they're still in this, i mean they're these guys they're both far left wing globalist guys they have a globalist vision for disney to push cultural marxism oh yeah wait isn't wait well, hold on a minute if i was like one of the investors at one of those zoom meetings if I, you know you had some big enough share I'd be like wait a minute so your philosophy is the same as chapex philosophy how are you going to how are you going to return disney to profitability if you guys are really kind of stuck on pushing global marxism which would be fine if people were paying for it but i mean see you see this is a business and you're selling a product uh films and whatever um and then if the films do good then people go to the parks but they also buy like t-shirts and all that kind of other disney stuff if if but it has to have it has to start with the good films so if if Chapek and Iger are on the same page with this cultural Marxism stuff, I'd, I'd be asking him at one of these Zoom things, you know, investor share meetings. So how are you going to do things different than him? Because it seems like you guys have the exact same philosophy, and that's where they will start giving you the double speak. And we're going to return value to our investors, and you, and we're going to utilize the structure and our, our important resources, the people themselves, and diversity, inclusion, compact. You know all the bullshit you've heard for the past ten years. And at some point, I mean, you 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 stop and like, hey. Buddy, we've got um, we represent this mutual fund, and we've got two billion dollars in Disney. Uh, we need a return on investment. Oh well, you know we're going to utilize our most important resources. The human is just yeah, yeah, yeah. We get that, we get that. It feels like you're reading a checklist. Like it's when you look them in the eye, you're like, okay, let's stop, let's stop. What do you, what's the truth here? You're going to burn this company to the ground to push this cultural Marxism, aren't you? Well, now that you, you know, now that you figuratively put a, um, uh, I don't even want to make a reference on YouTube. I'll say the lasso of truth around me instead of something else. It's like, 
you know that's the truth of the matter. That's like everyone knows that. And I don't know why the investors were on board for so long. Maybe they had some kind of emotional attachment to Disney. Um, Disney is a different type of company for a lot of people. Uh, you go into some people's houses and they've got like Disney figurines and collector plates and all that kind of stuff. And you're looking at, and there's, you know, you look at them as like, they're, they're remembering a Disney from a very different generation. Um, probably from the eighties and nineties. And then after that, you know, it's like you get, uh, you get the ever increasing, uh, Bolshevik Disney. So the, with this story, it, I, when I, this stuff first came out, I knew there was more going on with JPEG and, um, and Iger cause it felt like JPEG was just a fall guy just to buy some time. Disney kind of got mask off woke starting in 2015 when that star Wars came out with, um, Johnson and, uh, and Abrams. And you saw that first trilogy and it was like, it, People okay when Lucas sold Disney, Lucas was disappointed because he made like an Ewok version of the prequels, which were just okay, but it wasn't. It didn't come close to the originals, which admittedly was lightning in a bottle. So he kind of Ewoked it up. It was just too. It was too cutesy. It was too much of a kids movie. So when he sold it to Disney, there was a ton of hope. People thought, oh, Disney is going to knock this out of the park. And then the 2015 first one, come, I don't even remember what it's called, the first one. And um, it didn't. It didn't. You watch it like, ah, this is not very good. This is a mess. It's weird that you'd spend billions of dollars to to kind of make this. Oh, what are, you, what are you, istophobic? It's like none of those words mean anything anymore. You call that for it. That doesn't put money in your pocket. And surely if you're in charge of these billion dollar businesses, you have to know. Like, in fact, all that does is push people further away. Ah, that's exactly what an istophobe would say. Yeah, I I think there's something else going on here with these billion dollar, you know, to be fair, a lot of people are kind of waking up. So in 2015, people uh, knew that there was something else going on with, with Disney. My point being, it doesn't matter who the figurehead is because it feels like they're just figureheads. They um they value cultural Marxism more than money. By now, that has to be that has to be very, very clear to people. If you punch in cultural Marxism on YouTube, the first video is a two minute Jordan Conops Peterson video talking about it, like literally a two minute video talking about how dangerous it is. Then the cultural Marxists themselves pop up with these videos saying that it's not like a thing or whatever. And why they speak like children is a mystery. And it, it, you know, there's a lot of videos that are just suspiciously missing from YouTube <laughs> over the past um, five years. It's a shame what they did to YouTube, but the white pill is the thing is, it's kind of a similar to the uh, analog to comic skate is when you make an industry so bad, all of a sudden um, competition becomes uh, profitable. If things get that bad and you look at YouTube and then you look at Elon Musk with Twitter X, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have long storm form video content and live stream. It's going to be monetized. Oh, so you mean like YouTube Odyssey, bitch? If he wanted to buy Odyssey, he could just buy Odyssey or he could just build his own. It's like it's not these aren't aren't like I think the guy knows what he's doing. Um, and then like, yes, you could easily, you know, what do you think happened to MySpace? Yes, you could easily have a Twitter X that would that in a, in a year like YouTube would still be around, but it would be like Facebook now. It's like even Facebook has kind of reached its peak and it's now it's kind of, it's just kind of grandfathered into like people still use it, but nobody talks about it. It's kind of weird that way. Everyone talks about Twitter and we need an alt to Twitter. And, and they look at these, like the mainstream Facebook, Instagram, like nobody's talking about those. They're, I mean, they're willing to go to Mastodon, Mastodon and try to learn how to use that because that's how boring Facebook is. Anyway, so they're gaslighting you. They see, I mean, you see something all around you. And they say like it's not actually happening, you know, they're peeing on the leg sort of thing. That's um, that's just them lying to their to your face because they've had control over a, so much of the mainstream social media that they've been able to lie to your face with no pushback whatsoever. Twitter and Elon Musk is changing a lot of that discourse. The thing is, it doesn't matter who's at the top of Disney; they will continue down the same path. Eager and Iger and uh, Chapek, they have the exact same philosophies. How they execute that may be a little bit different, but they're not changing direction. They, the Disney will continue to lose money they're not gonna they're not suddenly gonna turn this around that that ship has sailed that's never going to happen so the um the cultural marxist propaganda they make doesn't sell they make more of it and it doesn't sell conclusion it's clearly not about the money their motive is ideological not financial which you know how many times you have to say that and with the objective facts before you 
and to keep repeating it, they go like, look, here, here's their, here's their quarterly reports, and here's the movies they make. Like roughly, you know, we can call these movies. I know the left wing gets triggered when you say woke, but you can say they're anti-Western, anti-family um, woke films, and they're not selling. These are two. Uh, there's a whole objective series uh, of data points, and and you you say it to a left wing person like Disney's just all about the money, but that flies in the face of the evidence I just presented with you. Clearly, they're not all about the money. The thing is, nobody expects Disney to do anything differently. They don't expect them to to start making normal films. And how dare you say normal? By normal, I mean what 95% of the population is on board with. The culture war has shifted too far to start to try to go back to like 80s or 90s Disney's. Hollywood is pretty much openly pushing this globalist anti-Western hatred. She belongs to the streets. You can't save her. It's kind of the split between nationalism and globalism. It's so, don't say anything in the comments, close to being openly discussed. It's just the thinnest, thinnest veneer uh, before the the uh, the abyss. So Elon's Twitter is changing things. And maybe after Twitter X and the Tesla or the Starlink phone, how cool would it be to have like a, a instead of a plastic phone, like a titanium cased phone with a, you know, that Tesla insignia on it. And I mean, without the bloatware and without the spyware and like a privacy based phone, how cool would that be? I suspect there would be a ton of people who would be on board phone, Tesla phones, tablets, you know, um, laptop computers and an app store. Yes, call me crazy, but I but I think people would be on board an alternative to Google and Apple and the censorship. Yeah, we're a free speech app store and it's a privacy based phone. Oh, uh, where can I get one of those phones? Because I'm tired of Google's bloatware and I assume Apple has got its own concerns. Um, he'll make a you know maybe he can make a film studio or you know maybe we don't need big budget films at all. Uh, especially like they're making these these two hundred million dollar films now. You look at them. Like why I feel like, you know, even with the what's the last one, Wakanda Part Two that came out, it's yeah, it's gonna make money. Um but I look at that like why did you make that? Who is that movie for? Is are you gonna get a Wakanda part three? Uh so I press F to doubt. So the Disney situation feels like a red herring to distract the investor from the fact that nothing is going to change. Iger buys them a few more quarters, but the direction of Disney won't change. How could it? Um, as I, as I, I kind of, uh, like loosely hyperbolically said, they'll burn Disney to the ground, uh, on, on the altar of Moloch to keep pushing this propaganda a few months ago. Now I look at it and go like, oh yeah, they're absolutely going to do that. It's, um, they're gambling on people will get on board with this woke propaganda and that they will have enough cash to sustain the business. And eventually they'll turn the downward slope around and people will start getting on board with it before they run out of cash. Will they or won't they? I don't. I don't see that happening. If anything, I see the anti woke crowd waking up more and more. Uh, and I mean, the next video is their um, the Strange World movie that came out. I guess it was the worst ranked Disney animation in their history. It's it's a, some kind of BLT story about kids. It, like I've been saying lately, and you know, it's uh, that that's a hill that a lot of people are going to defend the the stuff with the kids most majority of people left or right are not on board with that kind of stuff it's like oh let's go see a disney movie it's got a bunch of teenage kids and a family relationship oh and two teenage boys are huh huh ah uh... oh well you're not bigoted are you is that the binary is that the binary that you want to, are you sure you want to stick with that binary? <laughs> anyway, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys uh, probably on Odyssey and, and Bitchy, the, uh, the alt media platforms, and hopefully Twitter X. Gosh, that would be amazing. Just a, just a platform like YouTube, but with a little bit more free speech. I'll see you guys next episode.